In today's news, Mika Bari issues apology to Deputy Governor. Honorable Julian Fraser sends stern message. Julian Willock responds by saying, focus on the dire water situation in District 3. HLSCC College Fair recap. Green VI, we recycle program of success and meet the contestants for Miss Virgin Garda Easter Festival. Of yours, these and more stories when 284 News return. One. Uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your footwork. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> Alonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrells. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. <laughs> Get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. Oh, Angie, how can I get my claims paid quick? Rent's due next week. CG processes 99% of claims within five days. Remember when I was hang on with those goats? I caught a gust of wind and flew right into a moving car. Every appendage was in the cast. And they paid fast and fairly. That's what I get for trusting a man with a mustache and an eye patch. <laughs> now I gotta go. I'm meeting the guy who bedazzled my toes. 99% of claims are processed within five days. CG Insurance. Good like that. Welcome viewers to the Wednesday, March 20th, 2024 edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. Leading today's news in the wake of Deputy Governor David Archer Jr.'s threat to pursue legal action over defamatory statements made on Mika Barry's Facebook page, the social media entertainment platform has issued a public apology. Mika Barry, known for its controversial style entertainment through online videos, found itself in Brawled in further controversy after allegations surfaced linking Deputy Governor David Archer Jr. to the show's portrayal of government official one. Following the airing of the episode, Archer vehemently denied the claims, labeling them as defamatory while threatening legal action. In response, Mika Barry's Facebook page released a statement on Tuesday, acknowledging the seriousness of the situation and expressing a willingness to take accountability for any inaccuracies presented in the reference to video. The statement highlighted the reliance on sources and fans for providing information, acknowledging that not all all information received may be accurate. The page also admitted to charging fans an extra fee for all information found to be inaccurate following investigations. Well, it said, and I quote in the statement, the staff and production crew of Mika Barry would like to issue an apology to Deputy Governor David Archer for such accusations. Our source that provided us with such information will be dealt with and may be exposed if the penalty fine is not made, end quote. Further to the apology, Mika Barry announced that it would be permanently departing effective March 19, 2024. This departure marks the end of an era for the show, which has granted or garnered a significant following over the years. A government official number one initially surfaced in the arrest affidavit of former Premier Andrew Foy for their role in allegedly facilitating the passage of illicit drugs through the BVI's waters. The identity of government official one is yet to be known even after the conclusion of Foy's trial where he was found guilty of four counts relating to conspiracy to import cocaine into the United States, conspiracy to commit money laundering, and attempted money laundering and interstate travel in aid of racketeering. The Honorable Julian Fraser, representative for the 3rd District, dedicated his presentation in the recent opposition press conference on Tuesday to denounce any misconceptions that he will not be seeking re-election. Honorable Fraser spoke about the number of persons who have contacted him asking whether or not he is retiring. But this, he said, is based on persons promoting false narratives in the media using his name. Last March... One of my political opponents, with 
ulterior motives posed with me for a photograph and ended up posting it, posting it in social media with the caption, present and future. Well, in April, exactly one month, the present became the future. In all my 25 years of serving the people of the third district, never has my dedication and commitment to serve has been questioned and I have no intention to allow it to start now. Concerned residents of the third district, all with well intentions have contacted me directly and indirectly asking me if I am running for re-election, which I've found strange to be honest, because in six terms I've served, that question has never been asked. My God, President Joe Biden is older than me. Former President Donald Trump is older than me, so it can't be about age. One of my constituents sent me this message, and this shall remain nameless. It says, good Sunday afternoon to you, Honorable Fraser. Trust all is well with you and yours. Question. Have you indicated or intimated that you will not seek re-election at the next scheduled election? Somehow, I am getting vibes from a certain would-be candidate that seems to be sending such a message to the voters of the third. What is going on? I would not go into my response to that. Honorable Fraser said that in his six terms served, such questions have never come up. However, he now knows why. Fraser then took the time to send a stern message to who he referred to as these so-called would-be candidates, persons whom he said are using his name for their political benefit. Prompted by this question and some other quest queries by others, I did some digging up, digging of my own and I found a lot of reasons for people to be concerned. I found that this so-called would-be candidate often used my name in the phrase, preserving the legacy of Honorable Julian Fraser in their promotions, thus giving the appearance that of giving them an endorsement of sorts, suggesting, of course, that I am somehow not running. I want to tell the people of the third district that I'm the person they elected to serve and until and unless I say otherwise, anything you hear is just hot air. I further suggest that the use of my name be discontinued. It is obvious that people are being offended. Well up next viewers, more local news. He hit me. Will CG cover this? Don't worry. Remember when I was in that competitive arm wrestling circuit? Ah! Three-time champion, baby! I did feel bad crushing all those arms and dreams. So I took them all out for ice cream, and then we got crushed. <laughs> anyway, CG handled my claims fast. That explains the arm. The best cover for the best value. CG Insurance. Good like that. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What are you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome back, viewers. 
In response to the recent comments made at an opposition press conference, Julian Willock has responded to Honorable Julian Fraser's request to stop mentioning his name. Honorable Julian Fraser, representative for the third district dedicated and sought to denounce any misconceptions that he will not be seeking re-election. To this end, businessman Julian Willock, former Speaker of the House of Assembly, who was known to always publicly acknowledge and call the Honorable Julian Fraser's name in various correspondence, said the following. Ladies and gentlemen, today's March 20th, 2024. My name is Julian Willock. I have been bombarded with phone calls, video clips, and WhatsApp messages from District 3 residents that my very own longtime friend, mentor, and district representative, the Honorable Julian Fraser RA, has allegedly attacked me for doing work in my very own community. Yes, I have said that I am building on Honorable Fraser's legacy, and that does not in any way mean that he is no longer running for office. Building on one's legacy means that the many programs that Honorable Fraser has done in District 3, Ms. Kishma Pifobs and I have set out to make small contributions out of a love for the community by partnering with the private sector. For example, over his 25 years in office, Honorable Fraser has a legacy of job fairs and making contributions to back to school events in the district. Since Honorable Fraser's job fairs are no longer happening, Ms. Forbes and I wrote to him in 2023 requesting that both him and his district committee partner with us to do some of these activities. We believe they will go a long way in helping with the struggles and economic hardships of our people. Each event we carry out, Honorable Fraser is invited as he is the elected district representative, and to that end, we continue to show him the highest regards and respect. Willock further lamented that Fraser was allegedly receiving pressure from his opposition members. It was brought to my attention that at two recent House of Assembly meetings, some of his colleagues in the opposition have chastised him over someone doing work in his district and acting like the district representative. However, those were the same questionable figures who did not agree for him to be the premier when the opposition had seven seats following the 2023 general elections. But that's politics. While I wish I was there to advise Honorable Fraser before he was led to make his statement at the recent opposition press conference of March 19, 2024, I would have humbly and politely suggest that he focus on the dire water situation in District 3, jobs for young people in District 3, cleaning up the Sigaba Harbor, economic development for the district, and pathways to alleviating the growth in suffering and hardship of the people in the community, especially some of our seniors, some having to go to bed hungry, according to what they have told me. We will continue to have the highest regard for Honorable Fraser. He is loved by the majority of the people of District 3 and the entire territory. This level of support and respect have been demonstrated with seven consecutive election victories for him. Honorable Fraser has and continues to serve the people of District 3 well. And all that Ms. Forbes and I are doing through so partnering with the private sector is helping to build on his work. On a personal note, I wish to state that Honorable Fraser has opened a lot of doors for me and I will never forget his kindness to me, both personally and in my career as a public officer. The H. Lavity Stout Community College Career Fair in its second year has been considered a resounding success after several students capitalized on the opportunity to engage and network with a number of local employers. To it for media was on the ground. The event provided job seekers with a bustling environment filled with several opportunities in various industries within the Virgin Islands. Denise James, Transfer Counselor at the H. Lavity Stout Community College and the organizer of the event, provided insight into some of the goals of the career fair. Today is all about getting our students, our alumni and our community the opportunity to meet with businesses and different organizations that are having, that have jobs that are available. It's also about networking and ensuring that the community and of course what we call our community partners are able to engage with our students. So that's another thing that's very important. The career fair was mainly an opportunity to bring everyone under one roof and that we've been able to do. The 
Recovery and Development Agency in its second year at the event revealed that approximately 33 students expressed interest in joining its internship program. Speaking on behalf of the agency was Chief Executive Officer Anthony McMaster, who spoke about the key role played by the RDA in developing the future of the territory. Yes, it's important that we continue to exhibit the talent and the opportunities for youngsters around the territory because as the motto says, we're building for a brighter future, not just for ourselves but for the generations to come. And as you can see with all the different levels of activities that's going on within the territory, some negative, some positive. So we're hoping to be on the positive stream of things and giving the young people an opportunity to look at an alternate life. Whether they want to go into construction as the RDA signifies but beyond construction we also have other opportunities such as accounting, procurement uh, marketing uh, public relations, those are all opportunities that we offer at the RDA and we would obviously like to be able to extend that to the younger community, younger persons who have an interest in seeking avenues where they may have interest in furthering themselves Front Desk Supervisor of Naniki Resort, Jillian, spoke about the different jobs within her organization and the role the company played in shaping her career. I think Naniki acknowledges the programs. Um, like for me personally, I came and I graduated from here in 2015 and I did an internship at Naniki at the hotel. And because um, Naniki was interested in me and wanted to encourage me, they allowed me to come after um, I graduated and I'm still there nine years after. So I would say that Naniki encourages and Naniki is one of the companies that will call you back and say, come and work for Naniki. Let's help develop you. They want you to be interested in the hospitality industry. Also offering students and attendees various job and internship opportunities was locally owned telecommunications company, CCT. Executive assistant Akisha Robinson said she witnessed improvements in those students and job seekers who participated in a career fair in 2023. CCT was very eager to be invited to HLSC's career fair another year, like you said, in 2024. We were here in 2023. And some of the differences that were highlighted today were actually remarkable ones. I've had students that I interacted with last year revisit the stall again this year, and I have seen immense growth, not just in their resumes, because a few of them have written over their resumes, but even in the way that they speak. So we've done a few on-site interviews or mock interviews to give them an opportunity to wet their, you know, their feet in that realm, and they performed exceptionally well. Another difference that I noticed that's remarkable is the amount of vendors that were in attendance today. Um, the community, the business community, is really stepping up and coming, answering the call of HLSCC and trying to bridge that gap between collegiate students, and students completing their collegiate time and stepping into the world. As it pertains to the students, Deontse Lowenfield and Jaden George both expressed interest in the RDA's internship program, noting that it was one of the standouts at the career fair. It has been great. I got to meet different businesses, organizations that were able to like, give me the opportunity to gain some level of experience as it pertains to internships or full-time job in my major in business administration. So far, I've seen two people that are very interesting, like the RDA and the Indiresa, Department of Resources, but I'm still looking. I find the career fair to be really nice. It's actually my first career fair. Um, I, get to meet, I got to meet different businesses. Um, I found the RDA of all to be the most intriguing, intriguing basically, because those are one of them that offers internships for students graduating and who are still in college. So I find that to be great. Um, one of the roles that they offer, I found, was anyone dealing with, well, who is interested in um, event planning. And, you know, I want to be an interior designer and I also love um, event planning and I can also portray my creativity in the event planning. Meanwhile, student Decoy Farrington said he was happy to be provided the opportunity to meet with prospective employers. He said he had signed up with multiple employers to aid his goal of gaining work experience. 
It's been good. To be honest, I don't sign up for like four places so far. This may be like basically the fifth one, so it's going good so far. I get to see jobs that I've been looking forward to. So. And what is your interest as an aspiring um, young gentleman who obviously is looking to get into the workforce? Um, I'm just looking for experience and learning new things I didn't know before, you know? So anything that any of these jobs could give me, I'll just take it as knowledge to so better myself. Anyway. Reporting for 284 News, I am Kamal Haynes. Well, up next, viewers, more news from across the territory. At Higher BVI, we're not just about business. We're about empowering lives. And that is because we aspire to inspire. By choosing us, you're supporting a company that believes in equal opportunities, diversity, and community growth. Our mission goes beyond profit. It's about providing HR solutions, fostering talent, and leaving a positive impact. Join us in building a better future, a better BVI. Choose Higher BVI, where your support isn't just a transaction, it's a transformation. Together, we're changing lives in these beautiful Virgin Islands. Father Jesus, that learn me along like church souls. Hmm. All right, you enjoy the rest of the Next customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come yes, Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun to people. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of you. What? No, no man, forget that. How may I assist you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top of power. Eh? Welcome back, viewers, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Deputy Director of Green VI, Mrs. Sarah Penny, believes the We Recycle program has the ability to support the territory in diverting approximately 80% of its waste products that are generally burned or buried. Penny made the comment during a recent interview with Tweet for Media as she advocated for more residents to utilize the initiative. She said once each household adopts the principles of the program, achieving the 80% recycling goal will become a reality. All of our programs are guided by what we can get funding for, and it evolves. But in 2024, there's going to be a continuation of the We Recycle program, which is a collaboration between Department of Waste Management and Green BI. The success is phenomenal. Um, we're certainly, nothing is perfect yet, um, but right now the program at the end of last year has managed to start fully diverting glass from going to burn or being buried on Sortola. Plastics are able to be diverted and aluminum. With 2024, what we're able to then see be incorporated is machine oil and used vegetable oil, which you'll see more of, um, I think, in the next two weeks. The government of the Virgin Islands is doing a reveal on that particular waste stream. But textile waste, which we'll see a little bit about later, as an opportunity to divert you know, fabric and textiles from going to be burned and instead engage our senior citizens, um, BVI services, maybe other um, populations of our community that need um, job opportunities. Um, you're seeing that we recycle program create opportunities for other private businesses, whether it's in supporting the, the sorting and processing of recyclables or turning the recyclables into a locally made product. Um, so the we recycle program can support the territory in diverting 80% of what goes to be burned or buried right now if everybody participates. The deputy director also highlighted the issue related to plastic bottles in the territory. In February, she said over 1 million plastic bottles were exported, a process that costs the BVI lots of money. In the month of February, there will be another... 
just over a million plastic bottles are going to leave the territory. So we have another three 40 foot containers worth of plastic bottles, which again, Kemal, help me please to help the public understand that that isn't a positive thing in the way we all want it to feel. It's not to say that everyone should keep using plastic bottles. Um, it's actually tragic that so much time and effort has to go into managing them, right? Keeping them from going to be burned. It's expensive to export them. There isn't a like a place that they get sold to that generates revenue for anyone. In fact, it costs the country. So right now, Green BI has to fundraise and raise money to cover the cost of things that have to leave the territory. So it's not a practical system, but it is a celebration that we're able to keep that much plastic from going to be burned because it directly impacts the health of people that live downwind of any of the dump sites in the Virgin Islands. To reduce this overall figure, Penny recommended that residents invest in water filters, as well as rec recommends the practice of refilling bottles at the various water stations across the territory. She said currently 60% of waste in community bins consists of plastic bottles and utilizing the aforementioned practices will help to significantly reduce those numbers. And right now in the recycling streams, we see almost 60% of what goes into the community recycling bins is just plastic water bottles alone. So that should disappear altogether because we do not have to get our water, our drinking water out of those bottles. So it's an unnecessary waste stream. You have similar plastics um, that maybe your cooking oil has to come into. So we need a way to manage those kind of bottles. You have different plastics that we cannot remove. Um, so dream scenario, we would see that there be no no plastic bottles anymore because they're not necessary. And if we can go back to focusing on maybe investing in filters for our home cisterns, things that can attach to our tap, even if we don't own the property we live in, we can add a filter so that we can use our water that comes from the tap. Or we can do what a lot of us used to do, which is refill um, bottles, larger bottles. It also means you're supporting a local business. If you go to BVI Springs, Great Mountain Water, Hannah, any of our local water providers, you're supporting a local business, whereas the bottled water that most of the grocery stores is, are selling you comes from elsewhere. It's expensive, it has a huge carbon footprint, and it's really negative. Well, as on our news agenda viewers, this Saturday, three lovely contestants will vie for the title of Miss Virgin Gorda Easter Festival 2024. Twitter for Media's Jack Wedding recently caught up with the contestants in a feature interview. Here's a look at how things went down. I am Roshana Stevens and I am contestant number one. I am currently a student at the H. Laverty Stout Community Center and I am also an assistant accountant. My favorite thing about Easter is people coming together, you know, your family coming away, your friends coming, and us enjoying the music and the festivities. I thank my sponsors, my team, and my community for all the love you've shown me this far. My name is Garisha Simpleton, contestant number two. I currently study general science. I am a student at the Age Laverty Stowe Community College and I aspire to be a physical therapist. A community to me means togetherness, being there for one another, unity and support. I want to thank everyone who has been behind me, supporting me and encouraging me to keep up the good works. And I want you all to come out and support myself as well as my fellow contestants. Alana Williams, contestant number three in Miss Virgin Gorda Easter Festival pageant 2024. I am currently a teacher at Brigado Flags Educational Center, secondary division. I teach family and consumer sciences at the grades eight and nine level. My favorite thing about Easter in Virgin Gorda is the food. I absolutely love the food fair where we get to taste the local tarts, treats, the dumb bread. Once you're doing something good for Virgin Gorda, there's always support. Thank you.
That full interview will be released to all Twit4 media platforms tonight at 8 p.m. Of yours, that's all we have for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at twit4media.com and like us on Facebook at twit4media and twit4bvi on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye bye.